All right, guys, if you're looking to buy coilovers for your car, you will come across two different types of damper valving. It's linear damping and digressive damping. And in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you the difference between linear and digressive damping so you know what you're actually looking at and so you can get the right coilovers for your car. So the first thing to note is that pretty much most street kits and actually most coilovers in general, unless you're looking at race specific kits, feature linear damping. So that's usually used because it's better for the street. And then digressive damping is typically used for more motorsport oriented kits. And I'm gonna explain the difference and exactly what that means now in this video. So basically what you're looking at here on this graph is the damping graph of the two different types of dampers. So what this means is this is the force axis, meaning how much damping force is applied. And this is the velocity axis, which means how much force is applied on how much velocity of the damper piston itself. So this could also be said as speed, but we're not talking about vehicle speed. We're talking about the speed of the piston of the damper moving. And so that makes a big difference. So basically what you, what happens is along this line is how quickly the damper moves. So to give you an example of what that would mean, let's say you hit a curb a square curb like that with the wheel of the car, what that would have, what would happen here is that would cause the wheel and as a result, the damper to move quickly up very quickly. So the speed would be like very high up here. If you hit that at, at speed, like a very big sharp bump at speed, you'd be somewhere here on the velocity line. Whereas if you're talking about a more like a uphill slope and you know, the car's going that way, it's causing it to go up, but at like a slower, more gradual pace. And that means the speed of the damper piston will probably be somewhere along here. And as a result, the, the damping force would be here on the graph. And so basically this section is more like cornering, normal, regular cornering. And then you've got like smaller bumps and then you've got like big sharp bumps. Okay, so that's what that means. So now linear damping, which is the blue line is was called linear. So it applies, the more velocity, the more force is applied and it in increases equally as you go up. So obviously the more, the faster the piston speed gets, the more force is applied and you get this very straight line. However, digressive damping on the other hand, applies a lot of force very quickly at a low speed and then it tapers off. So why this happens is, or rather why this is used is Let's say you're doing cornering and you want it to be very stable during corners and damp a lot so that it doesn't roll as much. But then if you're hitting a bump, let's say a curb on a track at high speed, and that's going to be a very quick impact causing the wheel to jolt up and do this essentially, then you won't have the digre the you won't have the force shooting through the roof. Because what would happen is if you had a linear damping curve, let's say, and you wanted to get this much pressure this early on, the issue you would have is the line would look something like this. And then the force applied at this speed would be way up here. And that would cause serious issues and probably break your back. And so the only way to get around that one essentially is to apply a lot of force early on, like we have here. So it very quickly ramps up, but then it tapers off for higher velocity damping situation. So like hitting curbs and things like that. Now, when I say curbs, I mean racetrack curbs, not street curbs. So that's the point of digressive damping. So basically, if you're trying to decide between which of these two, it's in most cases, linear damping is going to be better, especially if you're using the car mainly for street purposes, because it's going to be more comfortable. And the reason why is because you get a low amount of damping force here. So you're not going to feel everything. This you're gonna feel a lot more, a lot earlier on, and the car's also gonna be stiffer at the lower damping speeds, so cornering and things like that. So it's not gonna be as comfortable, but you're gonna get more feel, which is ideal for racing. So if you're using the car primarily for street use, linear damping is what you wanna go with, and basically most street-based kits have linear damping. If you're gonna be using the car primarily for motorsport, some kind of racing, then you want to do digressive damping, and that's what, Kits like Fortune Auto, for example, they use digressive damping and different variations of it in practically all their coilovers because they're designed for track use. So that's an example of that. Whereas let's say BC Racing, most of their kits are linear except for the specifically digressive ones. 
Uh, the other thing you want to make a note of is that linear can be used for the track as well. There's nothing wrong with it as such. That At that point, it becomes personal preference. There are some people that prefer linear damping for the track, some prefer digressive. That's a whole different discussion. But basically, for the purpose of this video, if you can't decide, the safe bet is linear because you can use it for both, whereas digressive is typically more towards motorsport science. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what you should be looking at for the type of dampers. If you have any questions about any of this, put them in the comments below and I will answer them. Otherwise, if you're looking to buy coilovers, go check out nefariousracing.com. We've got BC Racing and Fortune Auto coilovers on there at the moment. We're going to be adding a bunch of different brands on there as well. So we can basically get a coilover kit that's going to suit your car. So check it out there. If you need help selecting coilovers, just shoot us an email through the website. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Catch you on the next one.